very great Thursday afternoon. Oh. Yeah. If I can carry this as usual, if so. As usual, there is something wrong. Very great Thursday afternoon. Sorry about that. <clears throat> there are so many issues with my systems. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get this thing work. Uh, pretty much act my my system, and as a result, it is all messed up. But I'm going to. I'm going to get past this. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. So, let me try this one. Alright, a wonderful Thursday, Thank, uh, sorry for the delay, thank you for stopping by here today. Well, we are endeavoring to <coughs> put a crowning uh, act on this seal, the, the seal of the living God, the sealing time, and the seal. And as Seventh-day Adventists, we should be aware of this very urgent and very important subject. Uh, well, I just... Okay. I just... Um, The chart is being seen. I'm going to try and move this. Well, what you're seeing there is the topic, the seven seals and the sanctuary. 
whatever we hear, the sanctuary. Okay. Up to you as well here. Greetings uh, again and welcome. I'm sorry I was muted here on this platform. So now I think I am good. It happens sometimes. But the substance is worth waiting and it's worth making the different adjustments for. Again, I want to say the topic is the seven seals and the sanctuary. As Seventh-day Adventists, I don't know if we are familiar with this, that there are more than one seals. And that is why people who have died will if they are righteous, if they are uh, at the time of death, all sins were repented of, then those who will come up in the first resurrection obviously would have to be sealed by God. We have gone through the sealing already and I, I'm going to ask you to just check out some of the videos or the YouTube or Facebook post that we have done. But this is one of the most urgent topics that we could have looked on. That is the seal of the living God. So we are going to look at the seven seals and the sanctuary, which is really the judgment. Let us pray. Kind loving Father, you are so wise, you are the sovereign God all by yourself. It is for us at this time to trust in every word that you have said. Help us not to doubt and at the same time help us not to lag behind or run ahead but walk in the light that shineth at our feet more and more to a perfect day. We know that men are sparking their own fire at this time. They are shining their own sparks and they are getting a great following. But we know that all that does matter because the truth will triumph. Teach us now what we ought to know at this time in Jesus' name, Amen. Well, my family, I'm grateful that you would have stopped by here today. I'm trying to share on a couple platforms and, you know, God has given us this technology and this instrument that we could share with everybody everywhere. And it's not by chance that you have stopped by here. It's divinely designed. We don't cross one another's path for no reason or out of thin air. So I'm sharing and so Hopefully the zoom is working. I, I can't see it. I was trying to see if I can find it, but I don't see the zoom or the YouTube. Uh, well, some window come up at it. 
I don't know if it is obscure because I'm getting some warning. Uh, let me see. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I have a chart here behind me. And this chart is a demonstration of the different seals as seen by John the Revelator. And the period of time that that covers is really the whole history of the human salvation. He seals every person in the who have professed who have accept the faith from Adam must be sealed based on the message that God, what God has said unto them, they have to believe and act, obey. The oath growth of that must be genuine. And as a result of all that process, one is sealed. And once one is sealed in God, well, if you are dead, if you die, then it's all right. It's all right. So, you might have heard before of this, of the seven seal that it would have been confined just to the Christian dispensation from the cross. But we are going to show you that unlike this theory, the real truth of the seals is that they cover the whole span of man's salvation. They cover the whole span of man's salvation. All right. I'm going to go back up here for a moment. The seven seals and the sanctuary and that is covered in Revelation 4 and 5, all the chapters, these two chapters. So we have a little, uh, we have a little length in this, in this one. All right, let's get into it. Um, I have a, an index here. There's a chart on the zoom here that if I can find it. Let's see where that chart is. I want it to show you that. Let's see. Well, I don't think I have to go there. It's right here. I was going to the mail. But this area in the center here, I'm sorry, this area in the center here, because that is the same chart, I got confused here. Uh, when we read, we will see that this is like a court. This is a heavenly court, which is in the sanctuary. And all the earthly tribunal are really patterned after what is happening in heaven. All right, I'm going to read a thought here. The fifth chapter of Revelation needs to be closely studied. It is of great importance to those who shall act a part in the work of God for the last days. So if we have to act a part in the work of God in the last days, we must be assured that we study the revelation. There is no be in, in Christ and the prophecy are aside. 
both are together. As you are in Christ, you have, it has to be balanced by the prophecy that Christ himself has revealed to us. So and that's why it says in volume 9 of the testimony is 267, you can read that, paragraph 1. The fifth chapter of Revelation needs to be closely studied. It is of great importance to those who shall act a part in the work of God for, the, for these last days. There are some who are deceived. There are some who are what? Deceived. They do not realize what is coming on the earth. Unless they make a decided change, they will be found wanting when God pronounces judgment upon the children of men. They have transgressed the law and broken the everlasting covenant and they will receive according to their works. In the book Acts of the Apostles 584 paragraph 1 it says, in the Revelation are portrayed the deep things of God. In the Revelation are portrayed what? The deep things of God. The very name given to it, its inspired pages, the Revelation, contradict the statement that this is a sealed book. A Revelation is something revealed. The Lord himself revealed to his servant the mysteries contained in this book and he designed that they shall be open, open to the study of all, especially us as seven Adventists, we must be aware of this. Its truths are addressed to those living in the last days of the earth history, as well as, as to those living in the days of John. Some of the scenes depicted in this prophecy are in the past, some are now taking place, some bring to view the close, the close of the great conflict between the powers of darkness and the prince of heaven, and some reveal the triumph and joys of the redeemed in the earth made new. So the revelation, as we are seeing here, it covers the past, the present, the future. All right? In the same book, five eight, Four, paragraph 2, let none think, because they cannot explain the meaning of every symbol in the Revelation, that it is useless for them to search this book in an effort to know the meaning of the truth it contains. The one who revealed these mysteries to John will give to the diligent searcher for truth, a foretaste of heavenly things. Those whose hearts are open to the reception of truth will be enabled to understand its teachings and will be granted the blessing promised to those who hear the word of the prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. In the Revelation, all the books of the Bible meet an end. Here is the complement of the book of Daniel. One is a prophecy, the other is a revelation. The book that is sealed is not revelation, but the portion of the prophecy of Daniel relating to the last days. The angel command, but though, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end, Daniel 12. And verse 4. It was Christ who bade the apostles record 
the apostle to record that which was to be opened before him. What thou seest, write in the book. He commanded and sent it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, Laodicea. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. <coughs> a quote from Jeremiah, or a reference, a Bible verse from Jeremiah 8 and verse 7 says, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people, Know not the judgment of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we in this portion of the earth history have been given the judgment of our message. It is the most urgent message and we should be trying to, we should try to understand it and try to share it because judgment is going to fall upon the Seventh-day Adventist Church first. When it says judgment fall on the church, yes, it's every church that God, that God has uh, bestowed with his truth through all the ages to give the message to the people. All right? And that is why we have to call it, we have to address it directly. If we continue to address this as something that is detached, as something that is in general, then we will never get it and the people will never get it. And that's what we will see throughout the end time revelation that God has charged the leaders for withholding information regarding the message of our time. Um, the seven stars are the seven are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches, Revelation 1, 11. The names of the seven churches are symbolic of the church in different periods of the Christian era. The names of the seven churches, mark this now. If I know you have heard this, if you have been an Adventist for a while, And some carrot juice and ginger. Real good. I know you have heard this before that the Laodicean is just referring to the time. My brothers and sisters, listen to this quote again. It says, The names of the seven churches are symbolic of the churches in different periods of the Christian um, era. That's Acts of the Apostles 5.86 So if it is representing the different periods, it must represent our period as what? As the, uh, the Laodicean church, not the period, the church in the period that God is addressing with the judgment, with the cleansing of the sanctuary, which is the same judgment. Um, <clears throat> it says, the number seven 
indicates what? Completeness. So it's not literal seven. It's complete. And is symbolic of the fact that the message extends to the end of time. While the symbols used reveal the condition of the church at different periods in the history of the world. Alright? So this the symbols used are <coughs> representing our symbol used are revealing. Watch this now. That's that's key. Revealing the condition of the church at different periods of the world. All right. Let's see if we can get to the reading. <coughs> um, I'm going to read first. I think I didn't put it in this study, so therefore I think I'll read a couple of verses from, <coughs> from the Bible so that we can have our foundation set. So we're going to read Revelation chapter... Um, we're going to read Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Oops. Oops. I'm sorry. Let me get this back up. Just the two, too close. Or it was all right. So Just bear with me one minute. All right, I think we're back. All right, I think we're back. I'm going to read Revelation. Chapter 4 and 5, <coughs> then we will go to some of these explanations. Revelation chapter 4. The Bibles are open, you can read or follow. Revelation chapter 4 says, <coughs> Alright, here we go. After this, I look and behold, a door was opened in heaven. 
And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he was and he that sat on sat was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders. If you are seeing my chart, let me just let me just go back to a chart on this screen. Okay. All right. Let's look at that chart. I have a chart right there. The chart is supposed to show us exactly what we are reading. <coughs> Let me see if I'm using this. Okay. So round about the throne were four and twenty seats, verse four, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. I remember we saw the throne set, we saw the rainbow, and we saw round the throne the elders in white robes. Verse 5 And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thunders, thundering and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a See of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. If you can see it, we have a picture of four beasts, and they have eyes all over their bodies, They're full of four beasts, that's verse verse uh, eight I mean verse uh, okay verse six, verse seven and before the throne or the sea of glass, verse seven and the first beast was like a lion And the second beast, like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So this, the first beast, was like a lion, the next one was like a calf, and then we have one with the face of a man and then this one like a flying eagle. So we're looking at a complete setting. John is seeing this. John was told to come and look at this and remember what we have read is that what, is, what the Revelation is revealing is things that have already passed 
things that are going on now and things in the future. All the books of the Bible meet here in the Revelation. And it is revealing all those things. Uh, listen to this, verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Mark here, we have just read where it says the book of Revelation, especially Revelation 5, must be studied. And we can understand when somebody would, you know, ordinary people, ordinary Christians, really, who let's believe that they, they weren't given much light apart from let's accept the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they are taught. You can understand when they would sit back and say all those we don't need to know. But I guarantee you when a Seventh-day Adventist would say that, we all need to know these things are, on the alternative, they might say, they are, they are of the devil. That's irresponsible for us. Why? Because first of all, we need to study the revelation in the light of the inspired word of God. So I'm just saying these things as I read so that you know that it is important. So, and when those beasts give glory, so we, we saw where they have six wings in Revelation chapter 8. They have six wings, they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying holy, holy, holy. So right here we know that we couldn't apply this to Satan. They were praising God. So right there you can see they are representing a people who know their God. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him, him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast down their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We are reading the Bible, that was chapter 4. Chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. This is crucial. 
We are talking about what? The seal of the living God. So in this scenery, in the vision of John, he is seeing a situation in heaven. Where is he seeing this? In heaven. But it relates to earth because here the beast and the elders are glorifying God. <clears throat> and as we say that he has the book in his right hand. And the book had what? Seven seals. That's what we are. This is the foundation, really, of the seal of the living God. The book in the right hand of God that is sealed with seven seals. Let me read it again. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Listen now. Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. That book in the right hand of God Almighty. The angel was proclaiming, asking that question. And no man in heaven, because we know men are in heaven, right? <laughs> no man, we have men and angels. But it's really saying no angel to. No man in heaven. Right? Proclaim with a wizard. Verse 3. And no man in heaven nor on earth. Neither under the earth was able to open the book. Neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look on it. John was allowed to see it in vision anyway. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not! Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed. Say amen, somebody. The root, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. This is the foundation of some great things. The final drama of earth history. We are looking at right here. And verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. So, you're seeing everything coming together now. So in this scenery, we have the 24 thrones, 24 elders, we have the judge, we have Christ who is our advocate, our barrister, our lawyer, our defender, right? And so who are left? 
out of a court scene, as you know it. The defendants, right? Us. In this drama, is Christ advocating on our behalf. All right? Uh, so verse 7 of chapter 5 said, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of the order which are the prayers of the saints and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to loose the seal seals thereof for thou wast slain that's this crucifixion right and hath redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every king dread and tongues and people and nation. I want you to underscore this verse because the first thing that we are seeing here is that all these parties in the judgment scene, in the sanctuary really, are representing us, are representing the redeemed. All for whom God's blood was shed on the cross is being represented here. So should we not take heed? Should we not take heed to this? We're talking about the seal of God. So, again, it says... In verse 9, I read it for emphasis. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and hath redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and, and people and nation. So, everybody that was ever born are uh, to be born on this earth before Christ is finished with this sanctuary is being represented here. I tell you that much. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels around about, round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times, ten thousand and thousand of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, receive power and riches, wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So what is here, you have to just imagine that the scenery here has tens and thousands and thousands of angels. Right? So just with your imagination, you'll just see this scenery as a whole bunch of beings, created beings, unfallen and fallen. In other words, angels and humans. Uh, <clears throat> going through verse it's just a couple of verses in these two chapters so I hope you read it for yourself and so that when you would go back to this video you will see the, some of the keys that you should use to understand this so <clears throat> I'm going to just read off here in verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Verse 13 said, 
and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Verse 14 and last. There only are 14 verses, but they are quite profound verses. 14 and last says, And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Okay, we'll be revisiting this chapter. Let me rest it right here beside me. We'll be revisiting that. <coughs> so, for <coughs> some reason I have to, in order to see this screen well. Alright, <coughs> I don't know if it's clear on it. So, as you can see, the topic, the seven seals and the sanctuary, and we, we have just discovered the source of the seal. The seven seals, the seven mean it complete, completely cover the whole time of human history. So, one of those seals, that book, contains our record. That's what it is saying. The book of seals contain our record. And no man can see our record. It's confidential. Ha! Ah. Our record to God is confidential to Him and Him alone. But we must be aware that Christ, who had paid the price on Calvary, he is the only one that can open the confidential record of the sealed book in the hands of the Father. And that's where we are. We must understand this seal and the sealing process. The seal and the sealing process. Or the sealing process and then the seal. Because if we don't get get got through the sealing process, we will not get the seal. Um, let me see if this is where I, I had stopped. All right, I'm going to pick it up from here since we have just read the two scriptures and I'm going to summarize what we have read in in. Uh, or focus on some high points. One, according to verse one, we see a door was open. What was open? What John saw opened? A door. Verse one of chapter four. Let's see. That's where we got that. Then when the door was open, he saw one sitting on the throne. Uh, I'm just going to say what I've put at this punchline, punchlines, is what we will eventually see. So, the door really is the veil in the holy apartment that gets you to see or to go or to enter the most holy apartment. So the door open is really, as we know it from the sanctuary study, is the veil was open. The one that was sitting in the throne in the most holy place, right where the mercy seat, with the commandment, 
is, as we know it, from Moses' uh, tabernacle, the throne that was there, God himself was sitting on the throne after it was set up in there, or moved to that place. A rainbow round about the throne, a rainbow. Rainbow here is the covenant. Remember, God made a covenant with us. After the flood, it won't be water, but fire next time. That promise, we can't shift it. No matter how we may try to deface the rainbow or whatnot, we can't change that covenant. It's a promise that God made. The 24 elders... From what we know on earth, it, there would be the jewel, the jewel, right? They are the jewel. And of course, earthly tribunal, we have 12. In heaven, we have 24. How about that? <clears throat> the seven lamps. Ah. If you are familiar with the furniture in the sanctuary, there, there we are getting a, a big clue that we are in the what? The heavenly sanctuary. The sanctuary in heaven is not all heaven. <laughs> Many people believe that heaven is all the sanctuary. The sanctuary in heaven is only that compartment that deals with sin. So God don't usually dwell in there. It, it came into being just to deal with the sin issue. Sin is compiled in the sanctuary in heaven. And it has two compartments in heaven. And so, at a special time in our history that we know as 1844, the door that was opened, that was opened is the door between the holy and the most holy. Right? And we'll, we'll look at that as we go along. And then we saw the seven lamps, which is the spirit, the sea of glass, and we also saw four beasts, and we discovered just from reading the Bible that the four beasts are what? People from nations, kindred, tongues, and they were saying, you have redeemed us. You see what, how much we can get by just reading and examining what we are reading closely, a lot. So, the lamb, of course, the injured lamb, of course, is Christ. The injured lamb is Christ. So, let's go through it. We have the judge, the jury, the defender, and the defendants. What is that? And of course, the jury plus in the courtroom, we have millions of angels. All right? Ah. Uh, <clears throat> Let's go. The description of the place is such that it bears evidence of being in heavenly sanctuary, in the heavenly sanctuary. The same is supported by the spirit of prophecy in Patriarchs and Prophets 356. We read, As in vision, the Apostle John granted a view 